Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord for his mercy. Thank the Lord for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord one more time. So much to be grateful for and thankful. Thank God for waking us up this morning, Lord Jesus. And not just waking us up, but giving us strength. Ah, Lord, we thank the Lord for his strength this morning. And we thank the Lord for gave us strength yesterday to be out in the parking lot for us. Um, for us being able to you know, pass our food for the, uh, for the community. And we thank God for the strength they given us yesterday to be able to be, to, to be able to do that, as well as wake up this morning and be in the house of the Lord. So we are so grateful and thankful this morning, and we want to continue to praise him, give him the glory that's due his mighty name. But again, we say praise the Lord, not only to the sanctuary here, but to the ones that are on different medias. God bless you. Thank you for being with us one more time. Thank you so much to be grateful for. Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for this, for waking us up. We thank you for the strength that you've given each and every one of us, oh Lord. Thank you for the mind to be able to want to be in the house of the Lord one more time, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, you not only woke up, woke us up, but you gave us strength in our bodies, oh Lord. You gave us mobility of our limbs this morning, oh Lord, and a mind to be able to come to the house, O oh Lord. So, Lord, we come with a thank you. We come with a praise, O oh Lord, to say, Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you for all that you have done, O oh Lord, all the things that you're doing and what you're going to do, O oh Lord. Oh, God, we just thank you this morning, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask as the lesson goes forth this morning, O oh Lord, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word, O oh Lord. Oh, God, bless our teacher this morning, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her, O oh Lord. Encourage her, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all that's been said and done, O oh Lord, at this time, O oh Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And our scriptures this morning from Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading here of his word this morning. At this time, we turn to the remainder of the lesson in the hands of elect Lady Perkins. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it, and be glad in it, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, for this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And my declaration is I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Glad that he woke me up this morning. Glad that he's been good. Glad that he uh, gave us traveling graces. Glad that the family doing well. Glad that he's given us a portion of health and strength. Glory to God. Glad that he has given us another opportunity to come together to, to lift up his name and to be edified his word on today. Just we gonna be we gonna rejoice and be glad in that glory to God. Everything may not be perfect. Every you may have a lot of challenges that you're going through, but when you start counting your blessings, glory to God. I will rejoice and be glad in these things. Glory to God. And then then just to being glad that even through all the challenges, you know, when your body is aching and things like that. Thank you, Lord, that I can even feel the aches. I can feel them. They may not feel good, but there are some people that are in position where they can't even feel pain. 
Glory to God. So thank you, Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in that. Our lesson today to, uh, um, out of the series, The Spirit in Our Lives. And today our subject is without the spirit, there is no fruit. There is no fruit. Without the spirit, there is is no fruit. Our focus verse is coming out of Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And you're going to see through the lesson, you're going to see there, there are different laws that apply. But against these things, there is no law. Glory to God. Lesson text is coming out of Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Truth about God is the Holy Spirit produces good fruit. The truth for my life says, I will. Remember, we said we will rejoice and be glad in it. Here it say, I will live by the Holy Spirit's power. Without the Spirit, there is no fruit. You know, I was going over that scripture, and the one thing, the one thing that stuck out um, with with that scripture in Galatians, it talks, it gives you both sides of the coin. But it says the works of the flesh. And then it says the fruit of the spirit. So without the spirit, there is no fruit. Glory to God. The works of the flesh produces works. It produces those things that the law, that's, that's lawing and warring. But then the spirit produces the fruit. Glory to God. So we're going to go a little bit further. We're looking at our outline. And our outline says the battle within. And that is uh, something that everybody has to deal with is that battle within. Um, then it talks about the Holy Spirit produces spiritual fruit. The Holy Spirit leads us to fruitfulness. So we're going to go for a little bit further into it here. And the, the it gave us a couple of, a few of the rhetorical questions. It, it wants you to have food for thought. Under the battle within, it says, recount a time when you dealt with an internal conflict between what your flesh wanted to do and what the spirit was directing you to do. Then you shall discuss how the fruit of the spirit is the expected outcome of being of discuss how the fruit of the spirit is the expected outcome of being filled with the Holy with the spirit. That's the expected outcome. Then it said, what desires changed in your life when you were born again? Okay, these are food for thought. What was what desires was changed in your life when you were born again? Why do you believe that either eternal or external change without the other is incomplete and insufficient? And then lastly, what does it mean to be crucified with Christ? So these are this is food for thought, and we'll get we'll go a little bit further into them. Our lesson connection. Uh, uh, comes in and it starts to and it, it talks about a sensitive topic to especially to women uh, but it talks about the hair and and but this particular um, syndrome is not that that uh, normal hair where where you're talking about alopecia and just because you're getting older, your hair is falling out and, and different things like that. This is one, this is a different syndrome. It is called the UHS, which is uncombable hair syndrome. And I looked that up 
and I had never, I really never heard of it. I re but it is uh, a real syndrome. And it talks about, um, uh, just think about our bad hair days when things just don't go right with our hair. But this particular syndrome, it, it, the hair, uh, um, let me, let me get to that part. The scenario in general is more traumatic for ladies than men, but can you imagine the emotional carnage if this were a daily condition? If every time you started to fix your hair, it rebelled against your best efforts and exercised its own will. This UHS is a genetic mutation that causes the hair shaft to take on a triangular shape, causing it to stand straight up. It is literally impossible for such hair to lay flat. So those with this disorder often look unkept or poorly groomed. At first glance, we might assume these individuals have no concern for how they appear, or we might deduce that they don't own a mirror and don't know about their misbehaving hair. And But to understand it, you have to look into their DNA to discover the underlying condition that produces the syndrome, the symptoms we see. So when you look at a person with UHS hair, it's 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 standing straight up, and you can see it. And they say they start seeing it in children. You start seeing it in children when you go to comb the hair, and the hair is prickly, and and it it looks like um, if you can think of the you know like the cartoons and the different jokes when somebody gets electrocuted and the hair stands straight up. That's how the UHS hair syndrome do. It it stands up and you go to comb it. It won't lay down. It won't do anything. So when I was looking it up, um, when I Googled it, you saw some people trying to braid it. But even after they braided the pieces that's not in the braid or left over, it's standing straight up. So the hair is really uncontrollable. It's very difficult to control the hair. And I and they say with children, it it tends to sometimes, you know, it will uh dissipate over time. The hair will get better. But there are adults with this kind of hair. And the hair is it because the hair grew longer in adults, it still looks just unkept. It just looked unkept. And I'm like, wow, never knew about this one. Never knew about it. But but Google it. It's UHS syndrome, un uncombable hair syndrome. So, yes. And so so you can Google it and see, see what it looks like. But it says it gave an example. It used that as an example. Um, it said this condition presents an accurate illustration of the spiritual condition of unregenerated humanity. Poor, prior to coming to the cross and experiencing the power of new birth, humanity's spiritual condition is wayward. It's just all over the place. It's a untoward and rebellious. Okay? It stands defiantly straight up. Unwilling to bow to the sovereignty of God. It leads astray from all things righteous and exalts in self-rule, leading inevitably to destruction, leading inevitably to destructive choices. That's what sin does. Prior to you under realizing that you're in sin and asking God to forgive you of your sins, this is what sin does. It acts like an un, uncombable hair. It's just unruly. If an uninformed observer from a different realm existed, they might assume we are unaware of our spiritual condition. 
that no spiritual mirror exists to enlighten us to the disarray of our lives. And so a lot of times you look or you look at people and how they're acting and you like, nothing tells you that this is wrong. Nothing tells you. And we understand how Satan does. It overrides and, and things like that. And then we're going to learn that some things, uh, um, it don't, it don't, the environment you're in exacerbates the situation you know, of sin. But it said that observer would be wrong. Even the most hardened hearts only need <clears throat> to look around our culture to realize something is wrong. And you think that people will look around and say something is wrong. Something is wrong with this behavior. This is just not right. So they say, or perhaps the observer would decide that we simply don't care, even if we know about our spiritual condition. We have become immune to the immoral chaos that evades our minds and lives. It's normal. See, remember, prior to receiving God, this behaviors are normal. You know, you it's, it's your everyday life and, and it's a norm. You know, when that's how you operate all the time, that is your norm. Um, so here, so therefore you are immune to some of the things that's going on. So it's a deep inside all but the very few who cut themselves off from God's mercy. There remains at least a spark of desire for spiritual harmony and peace. Uh, um, and and it talks about how people try to to connect with that um, and satisfy that uh, desire with different options. You know, you have the meditators, you have the the ones that get the 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 jade, the incense, the sage, and they burn the incense and stuff. And they, you know, everybody is going for the peace. They trying to find the peace and harmony. And they have attached the word spiritual to so many things, you, you know, and now, and it's so, so just saying I'm spiritual don't mean anything because the world that captured, think, think about it, the world being, Remember, the devil likes to mimic everything about God. He mimics all of it. So now just because you can lay down under the stars and look up at the stars and it's very peaceful. I love looking at the stars. I love the observatory and looking up and seeing all those things. It's very relaxing. But then another person is trying to satisfy that place in them. They're going to say, there's such a spiritual moment. This is spiritual. That is spiritual. You know, so it's so many things, and I won't go into all of them, that they go into the spiritual. They say they call it spiritual. But its existence is present nonetheless, that, that, that seeking, that seeking, because we are beings that when we were created, we were made to worship and glorify God. That was the purpose. He wanted a relationship with man. He wanted man to commune with him. So he put that innate desire within them. So therefore, when they're seeking and they haven't uh, uh, sometimes you haven't been introduced to God. Some people been introduced and reject. And so, but that still, that peace that he developed in them is still going to be seeking for that place. So now you go and you smoke you some weed and you go and zone out and now you in a place. You understand what I'm saying? So there is always a seeking to fulfill that place. Uh, but but only the spirit, hallelujah, can satisfy the spirit of God, can satisfy the place that he created for himself in you. So when he created that pot, that spot that's hungering, the only thing that can satisfy the hunger is what it was created for. Glory to God. So when he feels it, Glory to God. 
He get he the hunger is satisfied. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it says, uh, uh, um, going down a little further, we're still in the lesson connection. It says at the last paragraph, it says, only when we use the Bible to look deeper will we find the root of the problem, the source for the symptoms we observe. It say woven into the composition of every human is an inclination towards sin. And the reason that's there, and then we're going to go into that further. And we all, you know, anyone that studied any part of the word of God, the babies know about Adam and Eve and all that. But because of Adam and Eve, that innate thing has happened to everyone. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity that's across the board that he has no respect to a person is required it's across the board okay uh, um so there there's an inclination towards sin because of that particular uh um of uh, uh act of adam and eve as humanity we as as humanity we are deformed by a defect in our spiritual DNA. And that created the defect. It's a absent the influence of grace. We are bent and twisted, inherently inclined toward unrighteousness. Gratefully, that inclination does not have to define us. It do not have to define us, that inclination. We, we, we have to acknowledge that it's there. And then repent of our sins and let God do the work. But it's there. Everybody born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So when they say all have sinned, yes, all have. But we got to look at the word have and let it be in the past. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross and, 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 and sent back the Holy Ghost and gave us access glory to god to salvation then half sin is in the past that's a past tense we don't have to remain in sin the scripture the bible also say children sin not and it's had a period after not so that means we have the ability to not sin Glory to God. But that's when we are walking in the spirit. Okay. Because the spirit is sinless. So, uh, but it says, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. We are still overcomers. He has given us access. He has given us a way out. He's given us a door. He's given us, when we, if we sin, then we have an advocate Okay, so so he has placed everything here for us to make it, for us to be able to walk in the spirit and produce fruit. So we're going to go further into the lesson. It says the first part of the outline that says the battle within. When we are born again, an immediate conflict is set up within. And, you know. That is because the enemy, first of all, you battling before you come in because when your mind starts turning toward God, he's trying to get you to change your mind. He don't want you to press forward into God. He wants you to stay on his territory. So, but when you decide that I'm going to walk with Christ, there's a battle. There, there is a war. We are in a war, and that war is not a flesh and blood war. It is a war in the spirit, okay? So it says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. That's what happens, because what happens is the flesh is part is it the flesh is is that part that that the law and you're going to see when we get in more into that scripture that the law operates in all of that the things uh, uh, of adam's nature and all that dealt with the flesh it, it 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 causes the flesh to just do what it wants to do it the flesh has its own will it has its own desire that's why we fast and pray because we're bringing the 
flesh into alignment with the spirit of God. That's what the fasting and the praying does. It works on us. It don't work on God. It works on us. It brings all of us, it brings all of our members into alignment with the spirit of God so that we will walk in the spirit. You understand what I'm saying? But the flesh is still, we're, the flesh going to remain until Jesus transform us into that, you know, when he said when you, you will be like him when he comes back and you will, uh, 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 when he comes, you're going to be transformed. OK, because this mortal shall take on immortality when it does that, then you don't have to worry about this. OK, but as long as we're in this mortal body, as long as we walk in in this earth realm, this part of the flesh wants to do what it wants to do. OK, so it says that the spirit desires to work in us, but our selfish human will called flesh. OK, resist. OK. It said Paul told the church in Rome, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. So here we talking about that law. That's in the flesh. It say, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. We just talked about the flesh. These members that you have to bring into alignment. Okay. The law that is warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity, into the law of sin, which is in my members. It said, oh, wretch man that I am. That's Romans 7, 21 and 24. There is a war inside of us to determine which path we will follow, either righteousness to life or unrighteousness to death. Okay? Uh, um. The that law, I, I, I was looking at that word law, and in, in in it's what happens is it's an, an enforcement of the body of rules. It, it it's it's a controlling authority. That's what the law is, a controlling authority. Okay. So what the flesh wants to do is control and take authority over our lives. And the enemy works with that. Okay. Going a little further. Our sensual nature craves evil. When Adam sinned by rebellion against God's commandment. And eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He introduced sin into the human condition. Okay. So. So. That's an understanding that the majority of us have, okay? That propensity for wickedness has been passed down to each of his descendants. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's Romans 5 and 19. Every person born from that point forward is born with an inherited capacity and affinity for sin, okay? No one needs to cultivate it. It's simply there. You don't have to try. You know, and then the, you know, uh, uh, and then we we talked. We talked. You've heard different uh, ministers and ministries talk about. You know, children. Uh, anyone with children understands that right at the beginning, the children start learning and understanding. Mm, I can get away with this. Mm, I can get away with that. Mm, I. I and cry and say something is wrong and nothing is really wrong. You know, things like that. So it starts early and you don't have to cultivate it. It's just simply there. Mm-hmm. 
Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. It's like a succulent plant. <laughs> mhm. Mm Mm-hmm. You gotta work it. Mm-hmm. Cultivate it. That's so true. You cultivate it, yes. Uh it says here, um, it says anger, selfishness, and even violence are part of our composition. And these traits are exacerbated. by the environment in which each person lives. But the seeds of those things were already present in our flesh. They were already present. And so when we talked about the cultivation, one thing when you was talking about the succulent plants, because I, I, I like succulents. And um, even out here outside the church, those are succulents out there. But if you ever paid attention to even the ones outside the church, Now that we're in the heat time and they don't get a lot of water because they're not in an area that gets a lot of water, they're still growing. But when we had a lot of rain, the colors were vibrant, even in succulents. The colors are more vibrant and they grow better. They're more beautiful when you water succulents. When, so even succulents, when you cultivate them, they're even Uh, are more beautiful and and they they're more vibrant they're more they they're more alive they're more alive they more alive because you've worked it now looking at this this particular portion of the lesson it says the because these traits are automatically in us when we're born the environment in which we live ex exasperated It it cultivates what's already present. That's why you see people going over the line. That's why you see people getting crazier. You understand what I'm saying? And, and let's go back to what they were literally talking about at first, the children. When you see them, that's why I say bring them up in the way they should go. Because you got to train that thing to not just go overboard and just, just, Uh, uh, get wild and wayward. You got to bring it under subjection to a rule because the flesh is going to create its own rule. And you got to bring it under a rule of authority. So with children, if you, if they're being, if they don't have any kind of discipline, they're just growing wild. That's why the schools have so many problems because of the discipline that's lacking because it was allowed to exasperate the traits that were already there. So that happens there too. We're cultivating, but where are we cultivating? What are we cultivating? What are we, we, what are we trying to grow? Okay. It said such things as adultery, idolatry, wrath, drunkenness, and other wickedness are aptly described as the works of the flesh. You don't see that as called the fruit. You see that as called the works of the flesh. This appetite. For evil in fallen humanity is described in the condition of those who lived just before the flood. In Genesis 6 and 5, it said every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually, consistently, if just got because nobody brought it under subjection to the authority of God. You got to bring it in line. Okay. 
under B, it said left unchecked. I, I I looked at that, and so we that's what we're talking about when we're when we just leave it. Okay, left unchecked, our sin nature will bring spiritual destruction. The fact that the last days of man on earth are compared in Luke seventeen twenty six to the days of Noah shows the hungering after evil is still resonant with us and in our unrepented flesh. If left unchecked, stuff is going to get wild. And that's what we've been talking about. Things that's left unchecked. Things that's, that's, that's not brought into alignment or brought under authority. It says here, if such impulses are not brought under the control of God's spirit, over time they will give rise to horrific choices with deadly consequences. This progression from a weakness of our flesh to temptation, to sin, to just, they gave a, a order. Okay, if you notice here, this progression, they gave the progression from, it's from a weakness to our flesh. Here's a weakness because remember temptation is based on what we are weak at or what we like. You understand what I'm saying? So it goes weakness of our flesh to temptation. And then from temptation to sin. And then from sin to judgment. And if we don't bring that, if we don't check the weakness, you see how it's going to progress. Okay. It said it is clearly described in the book of James, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, this is the progression. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished, <laughs> bringeth forth death ah so so it got to be checked when it's weak that's when you be uh, uh, uh fasting and praying on the week yes mm-hmm I'll put it back. That thing to put it back. Yeah. Mm hmm. Lie. So it's the progression. The progression. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. That, you know what? The, the word of God says only God knows the heart because the heart is, des is desperately wicked. So he's the one that examines the heart. But when we, when we talked about earlier, when we 
submit ourselves and we we fast and pray for God to bring all that into alignment to his spirit then he will reveal to us and some things we don't know about ourselves until we are confronted. And then, but because we have, and I see your hand, because we have fasted and prayed in order to bring this flesh into alignment, when we are confronted, now he give our way of escape and now we can see the way of escape. We can actually see it because we have yield to the spirit of God and his discernment for our lives. And so I believe that's what brings us. We don't know all of us, uh, evangelists. Mm-hmm. The situation presented itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. I'm irresponsible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. With a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. All of us to God. That's part of your growing. That's part of your growing. That's part of your growth. Mm hmm That's part of your growth. So you know where you at. Yeah. Mm hmm And surrender it. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Constance. Oh, yes. Mm hmm I constantly do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I won't do it again. Yeah. And I can fix that. That can be fixed. Right. So what caused me to convert and then now I have to go and cover myself here. Mm -hmm. So these things and I own it. And own it. 
you know what? The reason that happened, because I was irresponsible. You own it, and you can repent when you own it. You can repent when you own it. Yeah. I saw your hands in it, but go ahead. Because were you bouncing off of what she was saying? Go ahead and go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that law in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Pride stops you from owning it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. God gives right, but there's wisdom, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you how you know how bad things go. So I said I'm 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 saying this to say it's preventive thinking. It's like before you do something, it's like an interview. They give you the qualifications of the job. Before you take that job, or apply for it, make sure you do the job, make sure you're qualified to do the job. So thinking, but that's why God takes the knowledge away. The knowledge, a lot of the knowledge mm -hmm. is going to don't listen to other people that think you should do something. Act and you handle what you're doing or act in that situation. I am the product of having God having to make a way of escape for me, and I saw the way of escape, but still, you got to take it. You got to take the way and don't take it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that, I guess that's my point with that because I, I, I don't like to like, get in these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. But that, that's always been my question. Do we really know ourselves? So I'm like saying, acknowledge the Lord. Mm -hmm. And even when you get in those situations, like, like if that's what you're saying, I don't mm -hmm. That's okay. Yes. Uh, but that's okay. Mm hmm. But, uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But but really, it it and uh, it is elementary. No no no. It really, it really, but that's when you, when you are 
See, maturity lets you realize how elementary it is. And so uh, 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 it on repentance period is owning. It, it's owning. It, and I don't want to go too far. Evangelist Owen. Mm-hmm. 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 Because you don't know who's going to hear it later or whatever. Somebody is going to need this. Yeah. They need this elementary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm hmm. We talk about being for real. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They are the ones that's right. And when we remember our end game, I, I understand the, the tag, you know, people will tag you and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but my end game is I want God please. So so repent quickly and elementary, that's for, you know, because I'm understanding the the the, the simplicity. Of, and I, I I like getting it back to simplicity because a lot of times we make repentance and we make turning and all that so big and difficult, looking so big and difficult. And it's, and it's and most of the time it's just this. And we talk ourselves out of it when you overthink it and and it's and it's real. I'm not downplaying, and I saw your hand, Evangelist. I, I'm not downplaying anything you said, but we will talk ourselves saying, well, what are they going to say? And what are they going to do? And blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. When we talk ourselves out of, we do that on a regular basis. 
regular when when God is telling us to move or when God is telling us to go lay hands over here or when God said it, we didn't talk ourselves out of it because we didn't saw it with our eyes. We didn't make it up. And we, we do that for everything. You know, a lot of things, you know, uh, uh, when, when our healing, when the, 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 the doctor says, well, this is going to happen. The, the fear of the unknown, you start making up all the scenarios that can happen. You know, when you're going for an interview, you done made up all these scenarios of what they might think of me and what they, well, 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 what if I do this and what if I do, and that fear will stop us in a whole lot of things. So it's not just in the repentance. We talk ourselves out of stuff all day long. But when we try, when we bring our minds in, and part of that fasting and praying and keeping our minds and in that realm, it will remind us a lot of times, no, get it straight quick, get it straight quick. Or it allow us, like you said, see the door. But now it causes me to make the judgment to go through the door. Because I like when you say, I can see the door, but am I going to take it? Am I going to take the way of escape? Do I choose to take the way of escape? That's still part of that temptation because it said the temptation can lead to sin, but when sin is finished, you see what I'm saying? So you're not taking the door is now leading to the sin that's, that has to be completed. You, Cause you can say, well, I'm going to take the door right now, but then start and then say, woo, and get back to the door. But then now you repenting for even not going through the door in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? But do it quickly. Evangelist Clark, I saw your hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, work because it is temple. Because when you get to be, when you do this, you come to that. It says it's so worried about what somebody's gonna say. Okay, you worry about what they're gonna say, but what are you worried about what hell's gonna say? But that's what I'm saying. What's your end game? Right. Where, where's the weight of it? Yeah. That's the governing. That's the, the authority. And he's going to cover that other side. Yeah. Deal with what he know. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. It then go and say, I put it back. And, and mm-hmm. that, but that's beautiful. That's the quick. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because the intentions, your intentions was not the, the, the stealing intention. You understand what I'm saying? It, it wasn't right to do that. But the intention, but, and I'm agreeing with you. And guess what? It don't even mean, but see how <clears throat> your first scenario, your mind was like, this going to have that, 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 that. But then when you go and tell the pastor, I did this, you know, the pastor may not never take you off the deacon board because your integrity stood. The integrity stood up. The deacon board is about integrity. It, it, it is, you may, you may in your personal life, all of it, it, and you may be in your personal life, you may be irresponsible, like Evander is saying, you may be irresponsible, but guess what? That position may now teach you of responsibility because of your integrity. You don't have, you know, you, you, it ain't saying you don't have integrity because you're just irresponsible. A lot of people, we lack stuff, you know, in our human nature, we just tomorrow and all this kind of stuff, but that don't say we know we don't have integrity. You understand what I'm saying? So, but one, one thing I want, when you said that, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't want to be this because you're the thought out what you know, cause I know myself and this and that and this and that, but God is the one that knows you better than you. And where you're placing yourself could be saying, okay, no, God, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm saying that God could be calling a person to the deaconship and then saying, you know, he's calling them, but then they didn't look at themselves and say, no, nah, I'm this and I'm that. God has taken, I can, we can use Deacon Moore as a prime example of that. You understand what I'm saying? When he was brought on to the deacon board, you know, and and he had the most integrity. He was one of the deacons that had the most integrity when God delivered him. This man will rob you standing out there because to him, he needed some money. He'll snatch your purse. He'll break in your house. He has said this. He say back in the day, he'll see somebody over there. He know he needs some money. Oh, wow, well, I got to get my kids something. You know, I got to get. And he'll go snatch your birth or something. He didn't want to hurt you. He just wanted what he wanted your purse. You understand what I'm saying? He 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 was a thief. He was a robber. I called him Bunny and Clyde. I, I that 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 was my name for them because they they would have the funniest stories. But the stories are so woo. You understand what I'm saying? The, the things that God delivered him from. And he was a drug dealer. I mean, you know, just God delivered him from all of this stuff. And that's why he would cry. He said, because that person, God made me a deacon. But don't play with the church money. You don't touch the church's accounts. You bet not do nothing to the church when it came to that because he was on you. He didn't play that. And so therefore, do God know you? Yeah. Yeah. But he know you better than you. I I can I can stand up for him in that area. I, I I really can because we knew his testimony. But when it came to this church, it's by making sure that money was in the bank, making sure you know when the administration gave a way to count and it had to be this way and this way. Well, well, they said we had to do it like this. They said we had to do it like that. His mind was, I want to make sure that it's done right. I, I, I want to make sure they said we do it this way. And I don't want to make, I, uh -uh, I don't want God to get mad at me. You know, it, it sounded simplicity. It was sounded simple, but I don't want God to get mad at me. I don't want God to get mad at me. I will put him up against any. When it came to the deaconship and to the respect 
of the office at that for that to handle in the finances of the church. Certain things you didn't give him to do because that was out of his wheelhouse. But guess what? Administration knows that. Leaders are supposed to know your people. You know who you're dealing with. So that part you don't give them because that's out of their wheelhouse. God leads you to give whoever for whatever reason. But in our natural mind, and it talked about that in the Sunday school lesson, when we look from our perspective and say, I would never put, you just look at his criminal on the record i would never put him in the back and give him a key to the safe no way but god so so i don't limit what god do to people and what positions god can place people in but it is the responsibility of the leadership of the house to be in tune with god and to be in tune with the people. Because as you walk into an office that you didn't think you was qualified for, God will elevate you. God will move you. God will teach you where you now saying, I, I didn't think I could do that because in my own eyes, it wasn't me. And in my own eyes, but the spirit produces the fruit. That's the subject of our lesson. So we cannot limit ourselves by what this and that and what people say and what people think. I'm a product of operating a lot of times on because somebody is thinking this way and somebody is thinking that way and I'm moving because I'm too shy or I'm too afraid because somebody may say this and somebody may say that. I'm still shy, disclaimer. But God, but God, but God, that I can't limit God. There comes a time, there comes a time when you got to say yes beyond you, beyond what you see yourself. You got to stand for righteousness when you are gonna be standing by yourself. And guess what? Because I've experienced it, it don't feel good. I got to go home and cry. But at the end of the day, God, I said yes to you. And then I see it on another end, in another position. I see where God has taken that yes and cultivated it over here. And then elevated over here, elevated you above the situation. Now you become something you never thought you would ever be because of that yes when you had to stand by yourself. Glory to God. Glory to God. Not mattering where you're not going to like me today, but God said no. God said that's not right. God said I got to move. God said that's not Hallelujah. So I know the effects. I know what it produces. But do we still live in the everyday of humanity and in this flesh? Yes. We still talk ourselves out of stuff. We still going to be like, yang, 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 yang. Too many words in ourselves. But then at the end of that conversation, what is the end game? Who knows you better than you? Flesh produced, I mean, spirit of God produces the fruit. And I'm glad we went there because that covered a lot in this lesson. It covered the, the conversation. Sunday school is a conversation. You learn a lot of things by conversation, pulling it out and talking about it. And yet, I like it simple. We, I like it simple. I really do. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm enjoying it, enjoying it. And you, and you just went right to that same where we started, mm -hmm. left unchecked. 
you know, left unchecked. Yeah, left unchecked. And that's no matter the what it is. You know, it, like you say, for us, you know, uh, the Lord sees, because he, he, right, he sees everything left unchecked. Mm -hmm. And you, whatever it is, bring it to him. They said all our ways, acknowledge him. That is, and, you, and that all our ways, no matter whatever it is. And so you yeah, acknowledge him that this is what I need help in. I'm acknowledging, even though he already know, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so, but, le and, and, the lo and the lesson, this is what's so beautiful. This it left unchecked allows you to see the progression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of uh, things, you know, where That's it would lead it. to if left unchecked. If left unchecked. But when it's checked, uh, but when it's checked. you get the victory over it, you know, and now you know, and then now you like, you like can, the, you're free. Now you're free. And now, right. And no matter how much, whatever, whatever, like, like say with Deke, no matter, because he want to please God. Mm -hmm. That's, I remember when I was at peace over there and it was all those people up there, you know, in the, in, you know, for us in the, down in, but because I wanted to be right mm -hmm. and I wanted to be saved, I it, that long that seemed like the longest walk from the back of that church <laughs> <laughs> up to that pulpit mm -hmm. when they had an altar call. It seemed like a longest walk, but it was some about I didn't care. It got mm -hmm. to a point where it's your mind, I didn't care. I just want to be right before God. I just want to be right. And that made that made that was bigger than the the naysayers and whoever else was, was gonna say something. Yeah, I just want to be right. That's it. I love that. I love that. But if left unchecked, there's one, there's a line here that says it's a downward spiral. <laughs> it's a downward spiral. Our greatest challenge is not the devil. It's our sinful human will. It's this. It's the flesh. He uses this flesh to accomplish his purpose. But it's our flesh. We warring against this flesh because this flesh don't want to do nothing that's going to challenge us. It say he, the next part is say, I'm going to move fairly quickly. I will confess my need of the Holy Spirit's help. We, we just talked about that. I, I, I need him. I, I, I need him. I own it, God, so help me. Glory to God. Without God's help, we will be mastered. By our our selfish will. Without God's help, this flesh is going to master us. It's going to outwill us. Okay? It's going to outdo it. Glory to God. We will be subject to... Uh, we will be subject to its desires, its compulsions, and its weaknesses. Glory to God. It says, without him mastering this, we're going to be subject to the, de the, the flesh's desires. We're going to be subject to its compulsions. And we're going to be subject to its weaknesses. When we do not, uh, 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 if it's left unchecked, and we don't confess it, and we don't do something with it, we're going to be subject to whatever this flesh decides to do. Okay? Uh, we will be at the whim of every carnal desire. Okay? Because nothing short of a supernatural work can deliver us. That's it. Nothing short of a supernatural work can deliver us from this flesh. From the will of this flesh, nothing. Um, the copy. That's uh, if she's looking at the copy of the lesson. That's not this lesson. It's not this lesson. It yes. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I just noticed that not it didn't have any copies, but we should have had another book back there. Yes, thank you. Um, so um, I'm under C. I'm at C under the second outline. Uh, it says here, and, and we brought that up earlier about a daily, a daily uh, uh, denying of this flesh. It said, we must daily bow before God and express our complete reliance on his spirit to give us victory over our flesh. It what what's uh, uh, going down a little further? Say the Holy Spirit produces spiritual fruit. Okay, the, that's the only way you're gonna get 
spiritual fruit. Remember earlier we talked about spiritual. So many things are spiritual. People are using everything that's spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. But in order to get spiritual fruit, in order to get the fruit of the spirit, you have to have the spirit. It can only produce from its own seed. Nothing else can no other seed can jump in there and produce the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit comes from the spirit itself. So if it does not reside in you, you will not produce the fruit of the spirit. You can be nice. You can be this. You can be that. But the total fruit of the spirit, you will not have. Something can offset it because it has to come from its own kind. It has to come from its own seed. You cannot be an apple on the orange tree. I can sit the apple on the tree. I can put an apple on top of that tree. I can hang it. And you know, Evangelist Lawrence can get real creative with props. We can tie something to the stem and tie that stem to the branch. And we do enough of them. Somebody walking past and say, oh, a tree. Hmm. You can sit something on top of it, but it don't make it an apple tree. The seed is still the orange. And guess what's going to happen to those apples in a minute? Because they're not attached to the vine, they will die. They will become rock. They will fall. Even the prop that's holding them up can't hold them because it's going to release and fall because it's not attached to the life source of the fruit. So the only way you can have an orange, it has to come from the seed of the orange. So the fruit of the spirit, the only way you can produce fruit of the spirit, you have to have it. And the fruit of the spirit is the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God that indwells in us. And as we was talking earlier, simplicity of it. The simplicity of it is we can have it because we ask. But there is a prerequisite, just like graduation. Graduation, there are prerequisites you have to do. There are classes you have to take in order to fulfill the requirement of getting it. The requirement of getting a diploma or a degree is you have to fulfill the curriculum. The requirement for getting the Holy Ghost, you got to fill the curriculum. And the curriculum, he's not coming in over your sin that you don't even acknowledge you got. He's not coming in over your sin that you don't even let go and release to him. That you don't say, God, I need you. I can't deal with sin no more. And we talked earlier about the yank, 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 yank. When we talk too much and give too many words that we explain in the sin, guess what? When we got to explain our sin, that means we still holding them. We got to keep explaining why we do this. That means we're still justifying. Just lump them all up, give them to God, repent, let it bury it, bury it, bury it in Jesus' name so his blood can cover. And guess what? Ask him for the Holy Ghost. And he give it liberally. He wants you to have it more than you want to. And that's just the simplicity of it. Yes. He already knows. So when you're talking too much, trust. He already knows. But guess what? When you're talking too much, is that somebody that believe you already know? You're trying to explain what they know. You're trying to explain it so you don't look so bad. Think about it. When our kids, we're getting after our kids for something, and, it, it, you know, we live that because mama didn't want lady to talk. You know, she getting in trouble, don't let lady talk because she's going to try to talk herself out of it. 
and yank, 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 yank. And, and then you start wondering, okay, did you do something wrong or why? You know what I'm saying? So that's not how we come to God because trust, he already knows. He already knows us. So when we are justifying, just say, I did it. Lord, I'm a sinner and I don't want to be that anymore. I just don't want to be it anymore. Forgive me for all the time it took for me to get to this place. Forgive me for all my, just, just forgive me. I'm not justifying it. I'm not explaining no more. Everything I did was because I'm a sinner. Everything I've touched was because I'm a sinner. And I want to be clean. I don't want to be a sinner no more. And then ask for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes. You, when you're serious, you only got to do it one time. When, when you're serious and when you don't take it back, when, when you learn that, when you learn that for yourself, you, you, you get it. You get it. Yeah, you get it. I, I said it, I don't know how many times. I, I and, and we are products of over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, they, they told us, they, did, they didn't hide it. But because, when it got real to me, and I really wanted it, I was done with the merry-go-round. I was done. I'm just like, you know what? I know they telling the truth. I know you don't lie. So guess what? Right now, I'm repenting. And I'm not taking it back. I'm going to walk in it. And you going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. It, I, it was just like that. And guess what? I end up getting that I got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He is a suddenly God. I stopped looking for it a certain way. I stopped projecting because that, that thing that we talked about earlier, that we, we don't, you know, we, we, the fear of the unknown, we don't know what's going to happen. So we say, okay, it's going to come like this. It's going to come like a much rushing mighty wind. I'm going to feel fire. I'm going to feel this. I'm going to feel that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And you done talked and the spirit is just standing there in front of you saying, if you be quiet, if you just open and let me in, just praise me in. I'll let you know what it's going to feel like because I'm going to be in, in there. You understand? It, it's just how God, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it simple. But the simplicity of it is it has to be real to you. That's where the simplicity comes from. When it's real to you, when you believe it and say, God, you don't lie. So here I am withholding nothing. Not explaining it because everything I've done is because of Adam and Eve and I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity and my environment cultivated it. Ah, stop. Because we talked about that. So so how, however bad I think I got is because my environment cultivated it. The things I went through cultivated it, made it worse. The things I've gone through, the things people have done to me, took and, 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 and made it, embedded it in me. It changed my thought process. It changed how I see people. It changed how I see life. It did that. But I don't want that anymore. I don't want to be that way anymore because I'm going to the root of the problem. The root is sin. And because I'm in sin, I don't want to be in sin no more. Gosh, hey. Hallelujah, that's the root. And guess what happened? Seeds produce roots. And so guess what? God, fill me with your spirit. So the root of your spirit will develop and produce some fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruit that you like, the fruit that's you, that I can represent you, look like you, talk like you, be like you, because the root is in me. Ah, glory to God. Because of the root. Kill the root of sin. He will come and dig up the root of sin. He will pull it out. 
because he, because even as a person that I, I, I take plants and I, I put them in pots and start them over. You can't start them in a pot that already has some other roots. You got, you want some fresh dirt. You clean out that stuff. And, you know, shout out to the Seedology Conference this weekend. Glory to God. Glory to God. We will be here this weekend, 1030 Saturday. Come and join us. But what, what happens is he takes all that sin root and he gets it out. He digs it out. He, guess what? The Bible said you become a new creature. So guess what he just did? He dug up all the old dirt. He put fresh soil. Hi, we ain't even calling it dirt. He put fresh soil in there. And then he deposits his seed. His seed take root. Ha, ha, hallelujah. And then it starts producing. And the scripture said, and we're going to read the, the, the fruit that it's producing. Ha, glory to God. It produces the love. It produces the joy. It produces the peace. It produces the long suffering. When you said, I'm so sharp, patient, the fruit of the spirit will produce long suffering. Hey, God, it produces gentleness where you walk around with a chip on your shoulder. It will make you gentle. Ha, it goodness when i was an evil person i'll get you back in a moment's notice i'm plotting i'm planning but now i can pray for you my thoughts are not to get you back because when the devil tried to use that temptation because that's who i was and he tries to bring it back the spirit of the lord raises up a standard then what he does he takes this flesh because that part was a bit and he that saved my soul so this comes under subjection to the spirit of god hallelujah where i want to get you back it comes under subjection to the holy ghost hallelujah where i want to do evil it comes under subjection of the seed of the holy ghost ah, ah. It produces faith. It produces meekness. So when pride tries to raise his hand up, God will let me know it's raising up. And then you pray, you fast, and it comes under subjection to the spirit of God. And then he produces meekness, temperance. When you're going overboard, hallelujah. I went overboard with this and overboard with that. God will say, okay, you're going overboard. You're doing this too much. You're talking too much. Slow it down. Slow your roll. You going to say something that you ain't going to like. Shut it down. He brings temperance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, when I'm worrying about, okay, when people keep saying you shouldn't be this, you shouldn't be that, he will bring temperance to your dressing. He will bring temperance to your talking. He will bring temperance to your mind. He brings temperance. And then the Bible says, again, such there is no law. The law of sin can't penetrate it. The law of the flesh can't penetrate it. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Against all of this, there is no law. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Those things where he said, when I want to do good, evil is ever present before me. With the seed of God that produces the spirit and the fruit against it, there is no law. That Warring got to come under subjection to the spirit of God. Nothing, hallelujah, can go outside of the spirit of God. That's why he tells us to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It don't mean that the temptations ain't going to come. It don't mean that it ain't going to raise up. It don't mean this flesh ain't going to try it. It's going to try it. It's going to try it at every turn. It's going to try it. But when we walk in the spirit, all that has to come under subjection to the Holy Ghost. 
glory to God. And you have the power when you have the Holy Ghost. You got the power. Without the spirit, there is no fruit. Uh -huh. So guess what? You need the spirit of God in order to have spiritual fruit. At this time, we turn it back into the hands of the pastor. God bless you. Join us this weekend for Seedology. Seedology. 1030 Saturday and 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon for the conclusion of it. But join us, Evangelist uh, uh, Owens is our facilitator for the Seedology Conference. Come on. We have lunch provided. Come on and join us. Come on and join us. You will enjoy it. Glory to God. Turn it to the hands of our pastor. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory, glory. Ooh, I, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> glory to God. I know everybody enjoyed this lesson. Glory to God. Beautiful lesson taught by elect Lady P. Beautiful lesson. I mean, Hallelujah. without the spirit, there is no fruit. Glory to God. And every and every question that was answered, glory to God. And I love it. Lord, just use, use her, use the class. It just used the, the oh God. So that we were able to walk out of here with for us, we said with all I get getting, get it what? An understanding. And we got an understanding. Glory to God. I love it. Glory to God. There's so much here in this, in this lesson, well broken down. And we thank God that we took the time to be able to go through it. So, you know, it's, and that's what it is. You know, a lot of times we're not rushing to, we just want to make sure we get an understanding with the word of, with the word of the Lord. God wants us to be, you know, he, he wants us to, he wants us to have, be victorious and, you know, walk, you know, not, not have to be wondering, you know, so I thank God for, for this entire lesson. Thank God for everyone that's here. The ones that's on uh, that's, um, different medias, thank God for being with us. Uh, we enjoyed a, be a beautiful lesson this morning. Well, 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 well. It, it was well. <laughs> Glory to God. At this time, we're going to stand and be dismissed. Start back at Lost Will at 1130. But again, we thank God for each and every one. Beautiful lesson. Beautiful lesson. And it's, and it's again in the lesson. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. That's the second time that's been in our lesson. Back to back. Glory to God.